earners, listen up. That's right, breaking news alert. The price of EYL University is changing. That's right, effective May 1st, the price of EYL University is changing. So what does that mean for you? That means you need to head over to EarnYourLeisureUniversity.com right now. Use the code EARNERS, E-A-R-N-E-R-S, and you can still receive 60% off. It brings your total to $149 for the year. That's roughly about $12 a month. And what are we giving you? We're giving you access to the library of all the EYL University webinars and seminars, access to our private Facebook real estate group, and exclusive content and offers that is only for our members. So don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't play yourself. Reward yourself. Head over to EYL University right now. Use that code and join the fastest growing community in the financial world. See you on the other side, y'all. Peace. All right, guys. Welcome back. Earn Your Leisure LA edition. Yeah, we have a LA very, edition. We have a very, very educational, exciting episode. I'm looking forward to it. I know you're going to learn a lot. We have Farzana Naini. That was good. <laughs> Nayani. Oh, he was sorry. close. He was that close. Was good. I'm sorry. Yeah, was I got, I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Cracked under pressure. Cracked under pressure. <laughs> but um, no, this is very, this is very um, going to be an informative uh, episode. So for people that don't know, um, there's a lot of programs that um, for business owners. So the thing of the thing about this whole podcast is to get people information, is to inform people, and we inform people of all areas of finance, but um, especially business owners and entrepreneurs, right? So when we heard your story and you was just educating us about how many programs and opportunities there are for for business owners, that's right. I'm like, okay, yeah, we definitely we have to tell the people to enlighten them, to mm-hmm. educate mm-hmm. them, and to really you know give them an idea of what's going on. So. Um, you are a business coach, business consultant, That's right? That's right. And you've worked with over 400 businesses in the last six years, all the way from small businesses to Fortune 500 companies. That's correct. Some of the largest companies are Lexus, JetBlue, U.S. Bank, um, the L.A. County, the Fire Department. Mm-hmm. So you and you, you work with a lot of different um, companies as far as the inclusion program and diversity, right? That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Yes. 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 So. First and foremost, thank you. Thank you for thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming. Well, taking our, our thank you for hosting us. Yeah, yeah exactly. I didn't even say thank right, you for you're coming. My spot right yeah, now. Yeah, right? yeah. exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. And you was just you was educating me about um, redlining, and um, after redlining, there were some programs put in place by banks to kind of help um, the effects of redlining right. for business. So can we just get a brief explanation of what redlining is for people that might not be familiar with redlining? Sure. So. Unfortunately, there was a lot of racist policies that were upheld by the government and other aspects of our society, and one was redlining. And redlining is when uh, a lot of different institutions drew literal red lines on the map and said, we are not gonna do business here and we're not gonna uh, have any loans here or access for people for real estate. And those were underrepresented communities, i.e. people of color. And so what happened is, as a result of that, years and years and years of this trauma and and uh, really this this uh, pain that has been put on people, our communities, uh, there have been programs and things that have come into place to help offset that. And one is called the Community Reinvestment Act. It is literally an act that says that Uh, banks and other people have to donate back to those communities in the form of, uh, you know, donations and charity to nonprofits and specifically it's for financial literacy. So what all you all are talking about, they're funding that. They're giving the money to nonprofits and I work for nonprofits so I was fully aware of what amazing programs there are because we were able to get the checks to do the program. So some of those things are business counseling, they're entrepreneur programs. I used to teach entrepreneur programs uh, and they're really low cost or they're free. And so it's just really good for our people to know about that. Uh, I'm Filipino and Pakistani and so I worked in historic Filipino town in LA and we did a lot of good work there. We still do a lot of good work there around how to get people aware of what's out there. Savings programs, they had one program back in the day where you could save money like 50 bucks a month and at the end of, practicing saving for 12 months, you get $2,000 from this bank, from this grant. It was amazing. So uh, people need to know about stuff like that and, and be aware about what's possible. So, all right, the Community Reinvestment Act. Can we just give a little bit um, 
a little bit broader detail on what that actually yeah. is. That is that is that a because we're in LA. I don't know if I said that we're in LA, but we're in LA right now. Yeah. Shout out to the city, the great city of Los Angeles. You know, we love yes. LA. Um, so, but is this a program that is specific to California, LA, or is it a national program? Yeah, I, feel, I feel like LA was broken into that red line zones, mm-hmm. and I think it had something to do with the train tracks, and that's how the the the, the parts of LA were broken up, like Compton, why it's like all these mm-hmm. things were broken up intentionally. Right. And in, in that mm-hmm. time, that's how neighborhoods formed and how gangs it's to formed. It's keep people where they were. Right. It was like a, it's a history of it. I think it was it's a documentary a about it. of it. Chicago. Same thing. Um, that's where the term other side of the train tracks come exactly. from. Exactly. Because here, literally yeah. a lot of you on the other side of the tracks that separated the good neighborhood from the bad neighborhood. Exactly. Well, quote unquote. <laughs> well, I mean, poverty from... Exactly. Not poverty, so yeah, yeah it's a good yeah. first bad. I mean, yeah. yeah, not good people, but good as far as you know, real estate prices and stuff like that. Yeah. So, all right. But it, it was a multiplier effect of that because if you couldn't get a loan, you couldn't own a house. If you couldn't own a house, then you can't have wealth. So it's what we see multiply over and over. And then on top of that, uh, the schools, it's a, you're in an undesirable neighborhood, so you're not going to have good schools. So on top of that, then your schools are bad. So what do you have? You have liquor stores and check cashing places. You don't have banks. So you're now paying to cash your check. Mm-hmm. You're paying to go and get your check cash. So it's just lose, lose, lose the whole way. So this, this Community Reinvestment Act was to help offset that, to help get people back into banking, to trust banks again, so not to go to the check cash places not to go spend money doing putting your oh we have people having cash under their mattresses that's what people are that's where they're saving their money because they're like we don't trust the banks how do we don't even know anyone at the bank actually banks don't have people that look like us so these nonprofits were these intermediaries these like go-betweens to help people gain trust back into the banks that's what they were for it's funny like that we I, we had conversations with adults where the first thing that they wanted to do when they got their check was go to check cash and we we're like well no you should probably have a bank account and it's like no nah, i don't trust it it's just something that's been in, ingrained in our community it's for it. so long that's it yeah and people right. don't people don't even really understand how you know what somebody made a good a good analogy to me because when i first when i got my first job and um i went to the check cash place because the check cash place was like a couple blocks away from where i worked in the camp and everybody went there and they were saying like you never see a check cash in place in like a, a mm-hmm. or like a wealthy neighborhood you don't. You don't. This is it's why. Like a yeah. fried chicken spot. You never really right. see. <laughs> you never see Kennedy's fried chicken. A couple chicken. things. It's going to be a liquor store, a church, a right. fried chicken spot, and a mm-hmm. check cash in. No, it's, it's true. It's right. true. So, but all right. So, there's programs in, put in place mm-hmm. by banks to help educate people, right? Mm-hmm. So, what are they actually educating them on? So, one is uh, how to have a bank account, how to actually write a check how to just use the financial institutions that are out there to get you used to things that, so you don't have to pay for your money. Because a check cashing place, okay, you cash your check, but then you get used to going there, and then they upsell you on like this loan. Oh, you need an advance on your check, you need some money, okay, but that's like gonna cost you 40%. Mm. So the next time around, now you're paying half your check, right? in order to get the money and then that compounds. So now you owe money. So all of a sudden you're owing money instead of making money where if you put in the bank, you gain interest, even if it's a little bit of interest, at least you're not paying to get your money. So it's a way to get people used to using financial institutions. And also the other programs were about how to start a business, which I really love. That's what I was a part of. Mm -hmm. So how to start a business. And then I even did financial literacy for kids. So we got piggy banks, we taught them how to count and use a calculator, and then we taught them about like needs and wants. So don't spend money on those name brands necessarily when you're that young, like save a bit, yeah. you know, earn your leisure, have, yeah. have this, your assets. This, this sounds something right? very yeah, familiar. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what you teach. So yeah. we did it all for you know the kids in those hoods and it was great. Can you so, talk about the, the program for small business owners? Yeah, there's an SBA. So, so the government has different parts of it, and one part of it is called the Small Business Administration, the SBA. And who pays for that? You do. You do. I do. The taxes pay for it. The taxes that you pay go to programs, and these programs are free. Mm -hmm. So the the programs are uh, small business counseling. So you can come, if you need a business plan, you can go roll up to one of these places and go and get yourself a business counselor for free. And they will coach you through a business plan. And and you've already paid for it because you pay tax. So you should go and get the resources that you paid for. Where where do I find this program? Because I know this is not being offered in schools. So is it at a community center? Or is there a designated area that I can find that program? Right. 
the SBA has centers, they're called Small Business Development Centers, and they're also partnering with the nonprofits. So they would employ people like me to work in these nonprofits to reach out to the community and then be like their like proxy, like be their ambassador. So they would be the ones to help in those communities, teach people about business plans and other stuff. And each demographic has its own, right? Because I know you said that you were working with the, the Filipino area of right. LA. And mm-hmm. is that true for the Hispanic area? Yeah, or, uh, and the black different? communities too. So the banks knew that the only way for people to uh, get used to them is to go through the nonprofits they know or the churches they know. So most of these communities have their own. Mm-hmm. So you could just look up what's in your area, look up who the main players are who are doing work in the area, really mm-hmm. good community nonprofit work. And they're probably doing this already. So, But how do you look it up? Like how? So uh, you could look up small business counseling or free small business development center, SBA, and you'll find it. And what, do you have to, how do you qualify? Like if so, okay, okay, if I'm a small business owner, I wanna yeah. have a business plan drawn right. out for me, right? right? Is there a certain qualification that I have to meet to have a, a free business plan? No, uh, it's free. You fill out one form with your name, address, and you check that you certify this information is true, and that's it. So I can Google. I can, I can Google SBA. SBA free business counseling, or small business development center, and then you can find one near you. And they're targeted to let's say women, or let's say the community that you're a part of, mm-hmm. and it's all free. They also have another program called SCORE. And that program is with executives. So it's, uh, I forget the first part, but it's retired executives. And it's these guys who are like retired in their, you know, in their retired time frame. Like they're they're, they're free and they want to give back. Mm -hmm. And they also do counseling for you. So you can even hear from an executive. Which is a trip because they're they're you know golfing and hanging out and they want to give back and so they'll talk to anybody. You just make an appointment and it's free. So in the area that you worked, what what's yeah. the retention rate? How many people do you see trying to create small businesses in, well, in the community you served? Th- the thing is, the thing that people think is you need money to make money. <laughs> you don't need money to make money. You need drive. Mm. The thing that I saw that made everybody successful is they had ambition. Like they could have a couple bucks in their pocket, but they knew that they could do it. I had one sister, she had uh, uh, an ice cream truck and I'll give her a shout out. Her company name is Cali Pop. And, I, and she would go in the hood and sell ice cream. I'm like, why are you going in the hood? She's like, my papa did that. My papa did that because it was the jungle and he was the only one that would sell ice cream in the hood. Mm. And I helped her and so we got her, um, her things set up. She got set up at the commissary like where she stocked her stuff. And just like the other day, I saw her in the beach cities areas. <clears throat> she was selling to the kids. And I was like, girl, you're doing good. Like, I'm so proud of you that you came up. And she, she didn't have much, but she made it work. But she had that determination. And it, it was like her legacy because it came from her dad. So she really wanted to do it. And so I had people doing child cares. I had people doing um, uh, record stores. I had p- restaurants. And they had nothing. They had no education even you know, high school dropouts, right? And uh, one of my clients, the park's finest, they were high school dropouts and they used to cook barbecue in the hood to stay out of trouble. So they wouldn't get into fights with people Mm -hmm. because they'd be the ones that would come through and cook for you for your parties. So they never got in in anybody's way. They weren't on anybody's side. Um, And they came to me one day and they're like, yo, like we want to go and buy this trailer. We want to buy this barbecue trailer. And so I helped them through it. They ended up, uh, now they have a storefront. They got on diners, drive-ins and dives on the Food Network. And it's like, and there's high school dropouts. So, so, so let me ask you this. So, mm-hmm. the Small Business Administration, yeah, they help you. They can write a well. They can help you write a business plan. Yes. They can help you with coaching, mentorship, right? right? Mm-hmm. Can they help you with funding? Yes, they can. So, all of the coaching and the classes that they have, they do want to get you set up so you can go and get a loan. And so, they actually have education on how to get a loan from a bank. So they work with banks on uh, getting businesses ready to go and try to go for a loan. So all these banks and the SBA, they all work together to try to help the different uh, business clients get ready and, and um, you know, try to acquire that, which is possible. And it's all free? That is free. All mm-hmm. free. It's all free. But we don't know about it. We do now. We do now. <laughs> what, 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 what are some things some, some, some people can do to help, them, help their chances to get a loan? Because that's always comes down to money. Yeah. And it always it's comes about down to money. credit, right? So use your credit card responsibly. 
and build your credit score up slowly and be responsible. So even if you, okay, so when people use debit cards, it's cash out the door, right? Which is fine because you're like, oh, I don't want to spend more than I have in my bank. But if you can discipline yourself and use a credit card and pay that 50 bucks down every month, then you have like a track record of credit. I remember the first credit card I opened, I only had $500, like that's all I could get, like that was my max. And I still have that card today because it, and I won't close it because it has a history of have like, credit history. of how many years I've had that one credit card. In fact, I don't think I even increased the limit. I still only have 500 on it, but I never closed it. And so they've seen like decades of me using a credit card. And I didn't have a lot of money at the time. Like I was a student, like I literally, I, they didn't know who I was, but I applied for it as a student. I was like, oh yes, I have this $500 card. And at the time that was like a lot of money for me. So I just never went over and I paid it off. And then over time you built your credit score. Um, back to funding for a second. What's, yeah. the, what's the maximum amount of money that can be loaned for a small business? There, what, there is no max. There's no max, okay. There's no max, there's different levels. So they have different programs for like, depending on uh, how much business you do, but they have uh, smaller loans. It's more what's the minimum. I oh. think that's the question. Okay. Like, it's more like, can I go for $5,000? Can I go for 10? And so what it is, is you can go and make a relationship with your bank, go and talk to someone there and start to ask these questions. And they will actually also coach you through it to help you get ready. And, and it's all, that's all free too. So I wanted to ask you one more question. Um, the Chamber of Commerce, you work with Chamber of Commerce, right? I did, I worked for, after this nonprofit, I worked for an Asian Chamber of Commerce. So what is the Chamber, I could always hear Chamber of Commerce here mm -hmm. in this city and right. there's different groups to have Chamber, like what is it, what, is the, what does that mean? Like what is a Chamber of Commerce? What do you do? <laughs> so a Chamber of Commerce takes, uh, businesses can sign up to join as a member and you basically are uh, members with other people and then you can network with these people, meet them, maybe do business with them. You can go to their different events and learn from them and it's basically an association so you're not solo on your own. Like if you start a business and you're like, I don't know anybody, where can I meet somebody or where can I learn from other people and even though you, they're your peer group like they're the same as you they might have a tip that you don't know so by going and hanging out with these people you're also kind of raising the bar on yourself because you're learning from other people who might be struggling the same way but might have a tip for you they might know something about a program or they might actually introduce you to some business and so by being around other people like that you're just gonna raise your chances of doing better okay so, any, so a chamber of commerce is not a government institution? It's not, it's by the city. Okay. And then there are these offshoots like the one I work for that are for the community. So there are nonprofit ones. Okay. And they're all re really like geographic based most of the time. Yeah, anyone can, can visit the chamber of commerce? You can join, there's usually a fee to join. Okay. So that's the only kind of thing that you have to sign up for. Okay. Right. All right, cool, cool. So yeah, that was some good information. So now we're gonna go into the second segment. We're gonna talk about um, different programs to hire small businesses. So the first right. thing you have to do is educate yourself to actually start a business. Mm -hmm. But once you start a business, you was, you was educating us that there's a lot of initiatives and programs and even stipulations that a lot of times big corporations have to put in place to, to bring small business owners on. So yeah, we're gonna go into that segment next. On February 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization announced an official name for the disease that is causing the 2019 coronavirus outbreak, COVID-19. This virus has created a panic we have never experienced before across the world. The coronavirus outbreak made America's job market go from 60 to zero in the blink of an eye. Since the coronavirus outbreak, the preliminary unemployment rate has rose by 0.9 percentage points to 4.4 percentage points and total non-farm payroll employments fell by 701,000. The Department of Labor reported a record 3.3 million initial unemployment insurance claims in mid-March. At some point, companies are going to tell their employees it's time to leave home and return to work. Don't get caught in the wave of stress of millions of people applying to jobs. Don't stress, don't wait, don't hesitate. Get your resume done at brandresumes.com today. All right, so in the second segment, we're gonna talk about supplier diversity, right? And so what a lot of times people don't realize is that there are programs in place and um, some stipulations a lot of times in place that a big corporation or a government agency, they have to use a portion of their budget for minority businesses, right? So, all right. 
Can we go into that? Let's do it. All right. All right. So, so all right. So, what's the deal with that? What's the deal? How <laughs> does can, that? Can we, before we go to, can, can yeah. we define what a minority is? Well, that, sure. that might be important to know first, sir. Right? Well, oh yeah. Can we do that? We can do that. So, tied together, your question and your question. There are programs out there where companies have to do business with people who are underserved. And so the minority category is basically people of color. So it could be someone who's black, Asian, Latino. That is the minority community. Mm -hmm. The native community has their own as well. Uh, but they're also a minority. You also have uh, veterans have their own category. So if we have folks here who are veterans who, who have served our country, that's another category. And women is another category. So you can belong to more than one category and actually try to go for business in each of these categories. Okay. But basically, if you're a person of color, you can go for the minority category. If you're a man or a woman, whatever you are. So can you walk me through and we can go through L.A.? Um, yeah. Like since we're in L.A., if I have a if I have a, a HVAC company okay. in, in Los Angeles, I'm African-American male. Yeah. Right. All right. How, what do I do? So let's say you're doing pretty good. Like you, you, you're, you got your business going, you're, you've got customers, like you've gotta be at the point where you're, you're operating, you're mm -hmm. doing not bad for yourself, you got your financials. Then you can start to go kind of for the big guns. Like you can go for corporations. And corporations are buying stuff all the time. They're buying light bulbs, they're buying paper, they're buying you know things like that. And they're looking for vendors that are minorities that are from these categories. And in California, specifically, the utilities here have a general order that mandates, basically, uh, it makes it um, required that phone companies, the water companies, all these utility companies, they have to do business with minorities. Have to, have to, have to, is a law, okay? So that's set aside. So at least 15% of anything that they buy any people they hire have to be minorities. So if you think about that, it's set aside for us. Mm -hmm. So how do we get it, right? So that's the next question. So you have to get certified to show that you're a minority. And the, you have to prove it by going through different agencies that give you the certification. You fill out some forms, you show your financials, and then after some time you pay, like you pay a fee to do that, and then after some time you get the certification. And after that, you can start to try to pitch your business to these corporations, and you get in this special category where you can try to get that money. So in New York, I think it's called MWBE, Minority Women Business Enterprise. Enterprise. You got it, yeah. Um, and in order to be certified in New York, your business has to be, I think, in place for two years. Mm -hmm. And it's a long list of different things that you have to provide, right. profit and loss statements, you have to, all kinds of stuff, like corporation letter, and no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very long list, I know, because I've done it. Mm -hmm. So, is it the same in Los Angeles? Mm -hmm. It's the same across the country. Two, they, it's the same. They so, have the national, they have uh, a national uh, certification organization that does this, NMSDC. And then every region has their local version that helps give information about it. So it's the same across the country Okay. for everybody. So what you just described is completely accurate and it's the same across the country. Okay, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, so, okay. So, and then, f f correct me if I'm wrong, 51% of the ownership has to be a minor, because you can have a white partner, Right. right, you can have a white partner, but the, you got to own more than them. So you got to own fifty one percent. Mm. So you can't be. That's the thing. You, you can't, can't be, be messing face. around, and you can't be fake. And yeah. why did they do this? Is because white folks were mm -hmm. taking advantage, and yeah. so they're like, "Look, we need to make this a certification. It needs to be proof on paper that this is minority owned." OK, because that's what this is about. This is not about some fake thing that, you know, you're the face of it. No, this is to make things right for underrepresented individuals and communities that have not been served. And that's what this is for, is and to make it right. You said the process takes two years? To no, get the you have to be in business for two years. You have to be, how long yeah. does the process take though? Like a few months. It, it's more how much paperwork you have in order. That's what takes time. Mm -hmm. Like you have to get your stuff together. You have to get your paperwork together. That's what I do. I help uh, businesses get it together and, and I do like consulting about that because sometimes it can be overwhelming. So, so it's really important to try to just have your books in order and, and your paperwork together to try to get that ready. But after that, it just, it doesn't take that long. 
Okay. So, working in, in L.A., mm-hmm. um, how long have you been working in L.A.? 15 years. 15. So, how many people that have businesses are aware of that, of the program? There are, it's more that they don't know about it, right? Or some people are like, oh, I don't need that, I'm good. Like, I'm fine with how I am. But the thing is, if you can go and get more, why don't you go and get more? Like, if you can do business with major companies, like brand names, I'm talking like Toyota or Honda or Boeing or Northrop Grumman or any brand name that you know has a version of this, why wouldn't you go and try? Because they're looking for us. They're looking for women. They're looking for minorities to do business with. It's set aside. They have people in those companies that are, their whole job is to go find minority businesses. Can you believe that? Yes. That's the whole, do- that's, <laughs> yeah. the, that's their whole job. Yeah. So, so a, a, mino- to do it. a minority is pretty much anybody that's not white, right? Right. Anybody's not white. That's right. Is a minority. Let's just say that, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And obviously a woman, any, any woman. It can be a white woman. It can be a white woman, yeah, or okay. a black woman. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you know like percentage wise, like who benefits the most from these programs? Um, you know, that's a good question. What I've seen, I mean, for the minority category, I feel like, uh, you know, it depends on the industry. So certain industries have more, right? So I don't want to stereotype, but that's what you see. So what you see on the world, what people are doing, that it reflects back into this. In, in your 15 years in, the, in this service, right? What, what's the, the, mo- the largest amount you've seen allocated to a business? Millions. Millions. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, like they, they start small. You start small, but then it, it multiplies. It's this multiplier effect. And then they get a bigger contract and then they go bigger. And then all of a sudden they're like running the whole thing or they're going like to different regions. Right. And then after that, it's sky's the limit because what happens is the folks that are in these corporations, they're like, yo, 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 this person's good. You need somebody here? I'll refer you. So then they cross refer across the corporation. So then it's the same guy or the same woman or the same person getting more and more and more because they're trusted, they're known, they're like celebrated. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're killing it. So all I'm saying is like, why don't we get more people in that pipeline, you well, know? Let me ask you this, because a lot of times in our communities, we, 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 we pick businesses that aren't scalable. What I mean okay. by that is- mm-hmm. Let's Go ahead, run them down, Shadi. <laughs> arrest, even though all of these businesses can be scalable, but for mm-hmm. the most part, they're not. They're, they're local mom and pop, restaurants, barbershops, sneaker stores, stuff like that, right? So these aren't, type of businesses, maybe a restaurant you can cater, but these aren't the type of businesses that are gonna get these these, these dollars from these corporate companies, right? So, right. from being in this industry That's for, right, for a long time, what, what are the most appealing businesses that can get money from large corporate? Like, what are they looking for? It's really everything. You walk through an office, what do you see? You see chairs, you see paper, you see light bulbs, they're buying everything. Um, it could be, there was a, one I saw recently, it was for hand lotion. I'm not kidding. So they're, they bid it out. And the thing is, they have to put it out to a bid to try to find minorities. If they don't get it, who gets it? The white folks. Mm. So if they don't find someone, if someone's not in that spot, it's gonna go to somebody. So why not have our people there? Why not have our people in that pipeline, right? So businesses like HVAC, like, Construction, plumbing. Construction's like plumbing. a big one. They can't find construction. Construction's huge. Construction's huge. It's not. It's not easy to start a construction it's company. It's not easy. I had a guy doing pest control. Like you, you can think pest of pest control. Is another huge. one. Another That's one. Pest control's yeah. huge. The pest control's yeah. huge. Yeah. HVAC, yeah. HVAC, HVAC is HVAC is pretty. It's pretty big business too, yeah. though. Because everybody needs HVAC on a certain level. Mm-hmm. You need it. Um, I think, didn't somebody reach out to us about pest control? And they were like, they're running this huge business doing mm-hmm. it and nobody knows about it. It's something that uh, we definitely want, want to talk about. But is it, I'm just, yeah. I, I say yeah. that to say a lot of times we just have to think outside of the box and think different ways, scalable business models. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like I said, you start a business, if it's not scalable, you, you're only gonna go so far. That's right. On, mm-hmm. on your neighborhood. Right. And even if there's money allocated from corporations, they, they can't. It's not a fit. It's not going to do it's anything. Not, it's not going to do anything, right. So, all right, you got certified. How do you find these? Is it like a, a database inside of the website to say, okay, HBO is looking for mm-hmm. construction? Like, how do they work? So every company has their own, 
uh, portal sometimes where you have to go and apply in there. And that's the biggest barrier because people have to go in each one and then apply, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're the certifying organization. They also have a directory. So NMSDC has a directory of suppliers. And if you can keep that directory entry up to date, people will come find you. So that's another way where you get tapped. And so I've done something where I've done some business with a, a university and uh, I filled out their database and now I'm in their database. So if they ever need somebody, they can tap it again. Like they know that they can find it because uh, I'm in there. So once you're in, it's great and it can work two ways. You can try to pitch yourself or you can also be, uh, you know, uh, tap for that. And then on top of that, these nonprofits like the chambers and stuff, they do networking events for the supplier diversity. So to tie it all together, back to the beginning, we're talking about all the different nonprofits that do programs. Another program is matchmaking. So they have these matchmaking fairs, matchmaking events where you roll up with your business cards. They have all the companies lined up. They have sessions for education. They have booths where all the companies are there waiting to meet you, and you can go shake hands and meet them. And it's all free. What's the name of this? It's all from. It's all supplier diversity. So supplier diversity matchmaking events. That's what it's called. So they're 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 ready. They're wanting to meet you. All you got to do is be ready with your stuff. Like if you have a one pager, which is uh, like a one page business sheet on what your business is and your business card and you get ready to make a good impression. So, so it's like a high level job fair almost? Yeah, okay. it, it's a matchmaking. Okay. It's like, it's like you speed know, dating. speed dating, speed yeah. Dating, yeah. <laughs> it's like speed dating. And, and, and they're there to help you. And even if you're not ready at that point, you will, if you make a good impression, they'll keep you in mind and then they nominate you for programs. So there are these programs where you get put in academy for, for entrepreneurs. Macy's had an academy for entrepreneurs. Mm. A friend of mine went through Macy's Academy for Entrepreneurs. She's a Latino woman. She's a Latino and black. And she got put through Macy's Academy. Or um, there's another one, Goldman Sachs. It's called 10,000 Small Businesses. And you can go and you learn souped up financial education. So once you're past the financial literacy, you know, the foundational stuff, they teach you the next level. And, and if the company likes you, even though you haven't done business with them yet, they'll put you through that program to get you ready to do business with them. It's all to help. Yeah, the Goldman program is good. I actually know a few people that went through that. Oh, and awesome. They, um, mm -hmm. It's like a college course, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they teach you high level business planning and mm -hmm. how to you know succeed. A lot of times, most businesses fail because of lack of education. Mm. And planning, lack of planning. Right. Right. But uh, like they don't really know. They don't understand business. Mm -hmm. They might be passionate about what they do. Like if you're a restaurant owner, you might be a great chef. But if you don't understand payroll and you don't understand like what's the good time to open your restaurant, if you don't understand the basic bi business principles, you're going to fail. Right. So this is what the podcast is about. But also it's, it's, it's important for people to seek resources outside of the podcast. Mm -hmm. So. It's, it's great information I should provide. And so one of the questions that I have was the bid. You had a, you said something about like the, um, the corporations, they, they bid, right? What is the, what's the bid oh, process? Yeah. So when you they're looking for something, that's called a request for proposals or they are looking for a bid. So a bid is like, it's like an auction, like I bid this. Like they're looking for you to bid your services. So you would go and say, I have this product and here's what my cost is if you want to hire me for my product or my service and i'm going to put my name in the hat to try to get that money or that contract and they'll review it and if it's between you and someone else and you have minority certification you will get it because they need those numbers they need to fulfill this quota that they have so it's worth it to get the certification if you're like no 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 i'm good like i can get it on my own like sure you can go and get it on your own but if it's between you and someone else who has a certification they're gonna get it so you might as well go and get it where where do these bids take place and how often do they occur so if you are in 
a good relationship with the co company, they will actually contact you and let you know when it's coming. So mm -hmm. that's one way. That's like the whole relationship thing. Like everything in the world, if you know someone, you're gonna find out. More, yeah. So that's one thing. The other one is these fairs. They tell you when they're upcoming bids. So at those booths I was just talking about, they'll hand out papers and say, we have this stuff coming up. It's not out yet, but it will be. And then another thing is they might have an online portal where they have uh, you know information that they share. So if you're in the category of that service, like I, I do training consulting, so I'm on these directories. So I will get an email that says, hey, we've got uh, a bid out for this, these services. And then it'll say what services and I can decide if I wanna apply for or not. So those are a few ways that you can find out. And then the nonprofits also get contacted like, yo, like we need someone now, like we need this person. So that happened with my friend with pest control where they're like, yo, like we need a pest control company. So I sent my, um, my client out and he got to do a walkthrough of this like major uh, venue here in LA. And I was so proud of this Filipino guy. Mm -hmm. um, and he's walking with all these like major companies and he had a shot. Right? It's because he knew me through a nonprofit. That wasn't out on some internet website. That was because someone like emailed me and was like, hey, look, you know anyone? I'm like, yeah, I know someone. I'll send them right now. Cool. So it, it's, it's all, all of the different ways. So do the, does the lowest bidder always get the job? or? No, it's a few things. They want to trust you. Okay. They want to see your track record. They also want to see your potential. Mm -hmm. And they will give it a shot if they think that like, you'll do good. The crazy thing about this whole situation is that I actually went through this before, um, mm -hmm. so I can speak on it firsthand. And sometimes, like literally, you could just fall into money because so there was a, a school that I was working with as an independent contractor, and um, they had a program um, called My Brother's Keeper Initiative. Mm -hmm. President Obama. Right. Anybody's not familiar, President Obama put together a program called My Brother's Keeper, and it was to give money to school districts and other type of community. Oh, so you short. It was for them to bring in outside resources to add to their curriculum. So they got a budget, and um, they had to fulfill the first twenty percent of that with minority women business enterprise thing, and they couldn't they couldn't do anything else until they filled that. The problem with it is that they didn't have like they didn't have they didn't know what they were doing. So literally, if in that situation, mm -hmm. if you you could have just stumbled and got paid because they were looking for it and what they were looking for was like anything that they can bring into their school district. So I think they had a program for like video gaming. It was complete nonsense. But the, the whole thing about it, it is grossly, that- It was grossly mismanaged. Yeah. Oh, grossly no. mismanaged. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was terrible. We'll leave that name But the thing about it was, to their credit, they didn't really have too many options and then they had to really do it in like a three month window like you said the that's pressure what was it on just them. sometimes they're like damn we need this now yeah and then they'll and they're like well like anyone know anybody so they start like hunting for it no yeah. you could have had any program anything that you had i, I watched you could have pitched it to the school district <laughs> yeah and I you could you could have got a nice check for that because they had they had they had right to, place right time right they yeah. had to use the money they had to use the money it was over six figures six it was six six figures yep they had to use it in a one year span and they only had like 30 days to implement their first program, their first phase of it. So you could have just walked into probably like $20,000 just by accident. So, so that's the thing you're talking about. It's time because every year these companies have a goal. They have a quota they have to hit. And so they're running up against the clock where to, they have right, to, they have, they to, have, have to, they have got to find it. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, make it easy for them. Get yourself ready, like yeah. get, know them and then, and help them find you. Yeah, that's the first thing we said when we met each other today. It was like, right. be ready. That way you know right. to get ready. Right, right. Be ready. And you were right. saying that. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. <laughs> that's a fact. Right? And you were saying that they have like, um, like parties, graduation, stuff like that, like to, for, so programs. so they have gala Galas. lunches like they're basically celebrations and award ceremonies so once you're doing good and, and you get recognized they will actually honor you at an award ceremony as a proud minority business which is amazing so not only are you getting paid you got the contract but now you're getting an award and what happens when you get an award other people see you in the room and then the other companies like him. <laughs> are like yeah oh we'll get him too yeah. and then you get more because you're 
trust it and like, oh, they got an award. Okay, I'm going to trust them. So then you get more. So it's it just multiplies and amplifies. And so the trajectory is like amazing. Like there's so much opportunity here. And, and I was inspired. I've been a lot of these is because of part of the nonprofit. So I got invited as a community member and I was inspired. And these people are making bank. Like, like they're small businesses and then they're medium and then they're, they're the ones doing millions. You so, got you to be a diplomat in this world, especially in business. A lot of times people have different views, especially entrepreneurs. Like, they don't really want any help a lot of times. They want to do things themselves. And I respect that. But, but if there are ways to actually accelerate your business mm-hmm. and to get money, and like I said, I've seen it firsthand where you can like literally stumble into money. You have to really ask yourself, is it beneficial to, 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 to fight against a wave or to surf it? Mm-hmm. Surf it. Because they're, already, they're, they're going to use somebody regardless. That's the thing. Yeah. It, the money's going out the door. It could be you or it could not be you. Right. Yeah. Might as well make it Go you. and take it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like I, you said, I had a quick question about the, yeah. the, 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 so when you have clients, right, you do the coaching part and right. the more clients you get, mm-hmm. are you compensated each time they get a new deal or is it just the once they find a deal? How's that work for you? Well, I do also coaching just to get people started. Yeah. So it's an hourly rate. Okay. I do group coaching as well. So if people, you know, just want to learn more, that's the thing. And then after that also to help them. Yeah. Like we can work it out whatever works for people i also am i'm like i want to give back so i don't want anyone to be like i don't know what to do or you know like i will help so there's educational resources there's ways that they can you know find out more yeah i can do that for sure so that leads us into our last segment which we're going to talk about um business coaching right so um yes that's what we're going to next all right so in the last segment we're going to um we're going to keep it in the world of business, but a little different conversation. Because a lot of times, what we try to do with Earn Leisure is highlight every area of entrepreneurship and business and just business owners and just everything. Mm-hmm. So being a business coach, not something that we've actually covered so far. So I think this will be a good way to cover it. So you're a business coach, right? That's right. Okay. So <clears throat> what does it mean? Because I've heard this term before. And I'm still not exactly sure what what a business coach does. So what does it mean to be a business coach? So what I do is I help people who are stuck. They have an idea and they don't know where to go with it. Or maybe they're at a certain point and they can't get past it. And so what I can do is help with that to help give strategies, tools, resources, and uh, put them in touch with people or even, you know, give them some ideas on their business plan to help them along. So it's like a consultant? It's a consultant. Right. But the thing with coaching is like sometimes it's a personal block. Like maybe you're stuck in your head about something and you need like, you know, life coaching or you need, um, you know, a pep talk before you go into that meeting where you're going to do a bid like what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you need a coach. This is like sports coach. Like you need someone to talk you through like the play. Right. So if you're on the floor. Right. And you're like, okay, there's three minutes left on the clock. What are you going to do? Like the coach will know what to do because you're in the game, you're playing, you're like, yo, like, I don't know what to do. So it's like, do I shoot it? I pass, what do I do? So the coach is going to help you through that. That's what's going to happen. That's a pretty good analogy. So are you day to day with the clients or are you meeting weekly? How does that work? Usually it's like every couple of weeks we do a check in uh, or a month. Some people stretch it out where they're like, I'm good. Like we can talk in a month. Um, It's a package. So you can do a series with me. And then after that, you know, you can go from there. I also have group coaching sessions so people can join those. So that's more affordable, but then also you get to meet people, which is great. And then lastly, online courses. So those are things that people can access. If you want to go deeper on a particular topic, people can go and access an online course to learn more about uh, it. And, and their plans, are, are you allowing them to try to be creative? Like if they're at a hump in their thought process, are you allowing them the freedom to say, you know what, you guys do it? Or are you like, I have a vision, let me just help you out with this, right? Because I could imagine right. that be becoming overwhelming if you have to do that for five to 10 businesses. Well, I mean, that's where the magic comes in. That's what <laughs> right. it is. So the magic with me is uh, I'm also intuitive. So what I do is I connect with where you're at energetically, spiritually, even ancestors. I'm for real saying that because what we don't have are culturally competent coaches. We Mm. don't have people that know how to talk our language. Like, yo, like I got, you know, uh, my grandma at home, she's sick. Like people are just looking at your profit and loss statement. They don't know all this other stuff. So what I do is I incorporate the cultural knowledge and respect 
in that and talk the language that you know and also incorporate that into your plan because you can't just make a plan without thinking about your family. You can't just make a plan without, you know, thinking about how you do business because you're not going to compromise your culture. You're not going to compromise yourself ethically because you're not going to survive. If you're someone else through all of this, then you're not going to survive because that's only going to last like a flash in the pan and then you're done. Or even worse, you're going to turn into someone that you can't look in the mirror and respect anymore. So what I do is I honor that in you. Like, I'm like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Like in there, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Versus like, what should I do? Or what the world's telling me to do? Or what my mama's telling me to do? You know? So that's what comes out of the coaching, really. No, that's powerful. It's honorable. Um, A lot of people have compromised their culture, but it's a different conversation. (laughs) So, all right. So let's say I want to, let's say I want to become a business coach, right? Yeah. I'm I'm tired of the podcast. I can't take it anymore. I just want to just start coaching people in their business. How, how, How do I do that? Well, you got to be informed and, and figure out what it is that you know. So maybe you're a strategy person. Like, you know how to help people to, like, use the dynamics. Like, you know how to how to operate within a company or operate, like, within an organization. That's your thing. Or maybe you're a really good, like, business plan person. Like, you're, you know how to make the business plan. So you figure out what it is that you know and what you want to teach and how you teach. And that's what you go with. You go with what you know and what you're good at. How do you, how do you market it? Mm. How, how did you personally? Me personally? Yes, you personally? It was all word of mouth. So it, people, it got on the street like, oh, here, you, you want to know someone here, talk to her. And so it was word of mouth referral. The best thing out there is your name and your brand. Mm. That's the best thing out there. You got to keep that clean and shiny and true. And once you have that, you're good because people will know. Good people attract good people, right? Look at how we all met. It just happens. That's a a great story. Right? (laughs) So you kind of manifest it. Like, if you've heard of this book, it's called The Secret. The Secret is like, how do you have people have things come to you and they, there's a dude right and he he's like look I want to make a million dollars so I'm going to write a check and put it on my ceiling I'm going to stare at that thing every day so that was what he manifested he manifested it and that's what you can do like w- with any of this stuff so what's the pricing model like for for coaching and I have a sliding scale so I can work with, with folks. So my corporate consulting rates are like 350 an hour, but that's like if you're at the point where, look, I need it quick and I need I know exactly what I need and you come and I'll give you that. If you want like group coaching, I can do, you know, different rates for that. That's like a package. And then I do do like, you know, sliding scale rates. So if you need to talk to me, it's like 150 bucks. But the thing is, it's like, oh, that's expensive. Okay, you want to waste your time? Like, you know, darting around doing the wrong thing? They, like you, you pay for quality out here. So invest in yourself. Don't buy those movie tickets for one night. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, don't buy that purse. Like, you earn your leisure. We gotta earn it. So put the put the money in, put the time, and save the money. Don't go out to eat. Make that lunch, right? And and invest in yourself. That's what people need to do. Are you, yeah, no, are, no. Are, for, is right. your is your coaching? Uh, California based or do you because I notice that you, you travel around and speak I a lot I travel and speak a lot so do you I coach in other areas as well I co- well that's all online okay so we can talk on zoom and it's like I'm in your living room you know okay. like we can talk on video call and like you feel so close in that conversation I do too that it's it's almost like we're in person so that's the wonder and beauty of technology is that that can happen so there's really no set standard for, for pricing, like you could just, you just, it's like a psychologist. You just do whatever you want to do. And well, you can, yeah. It, but it's like, there's it's no your industry, own there's no, scale, There's though, no industry too. standard. Like, no, no. no. I mean, like, I'm certified, so that's the thing. I have financial certification. I'm totally certified. I have National Development Council certification. I also have coaching certification. So all of that is like, that's fine. That'll, you know, help your rate along. But if people like you, they'll pay. I knew a dude I heard about, he was like charging $5,000 for an hour. And it's like, are you for real? But people were buying that because he was good. So it's it's really up to you. Well, I try to make it accessible, though. So we had uh, shout out to Alex. He was he's in the trucking industry. And he said he charged ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Yep. And he had an eight month waiting list. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So uh, you know, catch me now. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so so you hear, you hear um, that sound? Yes. <laughs> that the price just went up. Price price. <laughs> What's up, Ernest? We understand it's uncertain times right now for many individuals, families, small business owners, and entrepreneurs, and we want to help with some of that uncertainty. Right now, I want you to check out the Boost My Business program with our latest alumni, Farzana Nayani. 
The program offers expert insight on how to pivot your business during the midst of a pandemic, how to create systems that would increase business opportunities for your business, and how to generate more revenue by accessing deals meant only for minority entrepreneurs. And right now, the program is 50% off for our listeners. So head over to earnyourleisure.com, hit the alumni programs tab, and sign up. Or click the link in the description of this video. You know how this works. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Take advantage of this opportunity right now. Peace. <laughs> the price has gone up. But I give, so. I give a lot back. So I give in ways like... I can tell when I can figure out a way for it to work. So, um, you know, I might be in your neighborhood and I'll be doing a talk and maybe you can check it out. So if, if folks are to keep in touch with me on social or um, are on my email list, then you can find out when I'm doing the free things and then you can see me in person. So the best ways to kind of get your brand out there to become a business coach is, th this is my personal opinion, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, social media, speaking engagements, mm -hmm. um, any type of publicity that you can get, doing podcasts, um, writing right. articles, mm -hmm. establishing your credibility right. as an expert in that particular field. Because this is the thing, right? You gotta be a specialist. It's like going to a doctor. Now, I'm not going to a cardiologist to get my teeth fixed. Doesn't make sense, right? When you try to be a jack of all trades, you end up as a master of none. Mm. So you have to specialize in one particular area. So like the guy in the trucking industry, he specialized, he became the trucking guy. So now it's not unreasonable for him to charge $10,000 because he's established himself as a leader in the mm -hmm. industry. Right. Do you believe that? That what I just said is correct? That's, I do believe that, yeah. So I agree with that and I think for me, people know me because of what you just said. Because I write and I speak and people see me, I'm at conferences all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the corporations also call me. So I get calls sometimes when something goes wrong and they can't call somebody else and they'll bring me in and they won't tell anyone because they need it fixed. So I'm that person too. So I'm the person that can help, you know, find a solution a lot of time or a strategy or way forward. And it's also important to know that, and you said this earlier, off camera, is that a lot of times you're doing this for free. Like you're going to speak sometimes just for free yeah. to get your name out there. Yeah. And that's important, right? You don't, you don't charge this amount when you start, Listen, look, you have to build that clientele. I want to give back too. Right. And so that's my ethic is like, I've been there, I know, and parts of my family are still there, actually a lot. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is like, that's never going to go away. So what do we got to do? We got to help each other. And so, you know what they say is that you lift as you rise. You lift as you rise. If I'm rising, I'm going to bring everybody along with me. And if you're rising, you bring everybody along with you. And if you do that, and he does that, and she does that, then we all grow, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And that's what we want to do. We want to have everyone up there with us. We don't want to be alone. It's lonely there. I don't like to go into spaces where it's businesses and I'm the only woman of color. I don't like that. I want to see more people that look like me. I, I want to go up on stage and be like, like everybody else. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to do this by myself anymore. I need all of everybody up there with me. There's less of us, the me. higher I go. So how do you, how do you convince um, small business owners, specifically small business owners, that paying for education, paying for a consultant is valuable? Because they always try to, a lot of times, penny pinch. Mm. They don't want to pay for anything. So which, how, how do you do that? It's two reasons. Okay, number one is they figure out how to do it better, right? It's the strategy. The other one, number two, is the motivation. If you're putting money down, you're gonna go show up, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're like, this is free, or this is, I don't know, like, you're not committed. So I'll talk to you next year when you're serious, because you're not serious right now. So it's a promise to yourself. You're making a promise to yourself. You're honoring yourself. You're putting yourself first. You're not putting that pair of shoes first. You're not putting, you know, that bet on the game first, right? You're getting a guaranteed outcome out of this. And that's what all I can say. I'm not saying it's gonna end up like getting you whatever you need, like some kind of contract or whatever, but you're gonna move forward. And that's the first step. You have to look at it like sports. Like if you're Michael Jordan, or LeBron James or whatever, they're not going in the gym by themselves. They have personal trainers. Mm -hmm. They also have massage therapists. They also have- Nutritionists. Nutritionists. They have chefs. They have everything. Right. And because they understand that, like LeBron, he, he said he invests a million dollars in his body every year. There's a reason why he's never really got hurt. 
he's putting that type of resources in it, he's obviously going to be dedicated. He's not going to spend a million dollars and and not be dedicated. But also, these people are pushing him because you can only you can only push yourself so far. It's right. like lifting weights. Like that's why you need somebody to help you lift if you're really going to like try to max out. Right? It's like you can only go so far by yourself. So I encourage everybody, no matter what industry you're in to seek help, whether that's in the form of mentorship, whether that's in the form of a coach, whether that's in the form of just podcasts or, you know, any type of information that you can receive. A lot of times people have the thing where they try to do everything themselves Mm -hmm. and you're only going to get so far by yourself. You need help and there's nothing wrong with help. Um, And I think a lot of times, you know, you have to look at people that have been extremely successful and they always have help in some capacity and a lot of times they have a lot of help. Mm -hmm. So small business owners, unfortunately, a lot of times they think small. Mm. And And they stay small then. Yes, they do. And (laughs) so what you're saying is actually something that is extremely valuable. And I want people to actually fully understand the importance of it because I see it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand. Even myself, I fall victim to it. Nobody's perfect. But, you know, as you live and you learn and you become more humble, and that's the thing too, you have to be humble in order to seek um, criticism and also to seek help. Because a lot of times with coaching, it might not be something that you wanna hear. That's a tough thing, but you gotta be ready to face it. Right. Right. Like if I tell you that what you're doing is totally wrong mm-hmm. and you've been doing it for 10 years, it's like you, you might not wanna change that because nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. But if I know more than you, I'm trying to actually help you. Right. So if you're humble enough to receive the information and you process it, then you could potentially blossom as a result. There it is. Right. There exactly. it goes. There it goes. So how can people get in contact with you? Like what's what's the social media handles where you have a website, all that kind right. of stuff? I'm easy to find on social. So my handle is at Farzana Nayani. So it's my first and last name together. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn as well. I have a website. My website is www.farzananayani.com. A lot of resources up there. You can also follow me on all those social handles and see what I'm up to. You can follow my story, see my little words of wisdom that I have put up there all the time, and just check it out and, and be inspired yourself. No, for sure. I want to thank you for thank coming. You for coming. Uh, thank, thank you for hosting you. us. And yeah. shout out to all the people in the Philippines as well. So I used to live in Hawaii. And you did? So did I. Are oh, you did serious? you? What part of Hawaii? Oahu. Okay. I was on the Big Island. Oh, I went to school there for a couple of what years. What school did you go to? Uh, University of Hawaii at Manoa. Okay. Mm. I went to the University of Hawaii at Hilo. So we have Shaka, more common. Bro. Yeah, for sure. Dude, Mahalo. What? Mahalo. 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 Oh, that's, so, <laughs> that's hello and goodbye. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Aloha to everyone. <laughs> yes. I wear many hats. So, uh, yes, I say that to say there's a, there's a very large Filipino um, population in Hawaii. So very good people. And I actually went to the Philippines, me and Jamal. Went to, Is we, that right? We yeah. went to the Philippines. Um, so shout out to all the good people of the Philippines. Shout I have not been to, to Pakistan, but shout out to Pakistan as well. Shout out to the good people yes. of Pakistan. Yes. Um, and yeah, that's and a good, yeah. that's the thing with Earn Your Leisure. We, we're for everybody. Yeah. We're for everybody. We're and for um, the information. I thought you were going to break out some Tagalog. I was. <laughs> Salam <laughs> There we go. <laughs> the information is for the entire world. That's what, that's what we, we, we're not limiting ourselves to anybody. We want to give information to entire mankind all over the world. So um, thank you again for joining us. Thank we appreciate you. it. Um, Troy. Yeah, well, we got to give a shout out to Mike, too. Right? The, he had a plane ride here to LA. Dude, it was a cosmic <laughs> meeting where we had four hours from Atlanta to LA yeah. where we talked. We talked so much that the lady between us had to move because she's like, you all need to like get together. <laughs> You're yeah. an entrepreneur. He, so he, it, couldn't, he it, couldn't wait to tell us about the conversation yeah. and us meeting. So th- right. shout out to Mike and um, yes, thank yes. you again. Yeah, so, shout out to Mike, man. The, the producer of the show and um he told us he was like i just met this this lady on the plane and we got an interview <laughs> you gotta her. say how he talks though wow yo i just said this guy you got we gotta have her we gotta have her, <laughs> no, you gotta meet her. So you gotta like, meet all right her. man if it goes wrong it's on you <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's shout okay out. the universe had a hand in it <laughs> shout, so. shout out to mike faith man we, we, we put we put our faith in him right <laughs> and i told him that he would get all the credit if it went right and he would get all the blame if it going wrong so, <laughs> so what's the verdict 
No, no. <laughs> she finishes. So. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think you know he 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 picked a he he made a good decision. Good. So shout out to I'm Mike glad. for sure. Yeah. Troy, yeah. housekeeping yeah. items. Yeah. Shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. Y'all know that's our proud to pay program. Um, it is doing tremendously well. We have bonus content up there. Y'all know there's five tiers you can join at, and we're gonna p- keep putting content at. And we we have something special. I told you when we get to 100, we're gonna do something special for five of our patrons, and we're about to release that very soon uh, and shout out to everybody who is buying the merch you know we, we put up the the fall uh fall wear for on earlyleisure.com and shoddy has on the crew neck i'm wearing the hoodie it is cold in new york and it is chilly at night in la it is it's, it's a desert chilly. It's, it's chilly cold at, at night. night um so yeah that's why we have it on even though we are in la right. um and we have some 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 new merch that is also going to be launched uh we gave uh that out on uh the episode with john harry that our earners is going to be the name for our, our followers. So we're going to have some merch that, nice. you know, signifies that. So look, be on the lookout for that and uh, keep supporting. Yeah, supporters. I like I like the word supporters better than follow. Social media, I don't really like how they phrase that because you're, you're not following us. You're supporting us, and we appreciate you, and we're not, we're not treating you like a fan or a follower. You're a supporter, and we, we, we really love you. We love you, and we appreciate you. We wouldn't be here without you. And the book tip for this week is by Ben Harwitz. If you're not familiar with Ben Harwitz, he's a legendary um, VC investor, angel investor, and he's also very good friends with Nas. He's the one that actually encouraged Nas to get into the venture capital world. Anybody that follows Nas knows that he's huge right now in venture capital. So his book is What You Do Is Who You Are. So interesting read. Check it out. And um, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.